Good evening and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savagery, with our brother Alok. Namaste. We continue Canto 14 of Book 2, the book of the Traveler of the Worlds. Canto 14 is the world of soul, and we are on page 290. Oh, we ended with that beautiful line, and the world change with the beauty of a smile. Yes. So we continue, and uh, as we know, this is about the cosmic spirit. So cosmic consciousness has two sides. One is cosmic ignorance, which means the cosmic vital, the cosmic physical, the cosmic mental. And this is the cosmic truth. The cosmic truth is there in the cosmic spirit that holds within itself the cosmic truth, which means the truth of creation and the truth of cosmos, undistorted by appearances, undistorted by the ignorance, which gives a different texture to everything. Into a wonderful bodiless realm he came. So now this is a realm which is divested of the mental, vital and physical coverings. Uh, it, in a certain sense, we'll touch here also the psychic plane, where after death, the soul goes and comes back. <clears throat> the home of a passion without name or voice. This is the passion, which is the creative urge in the divine. That's how the cosmic consciousness, which is constantly receiving the truths from above and releasing them into creation. So it's a passion. Creation is a passionate act of the divine. It's not, it's not a, you know... You know the way we put it, sad or helpless. Into a wonderful bodiless realm he came, the home of a passion without name or voice, a depth he felt answering to every height, a nook was found that could embrace all worlds, a point that was the conscious knot of space, an hour eternal in the heart of time. So it is the meeting point of the eternal or the eternity above and the play of space and time which is there in the cosmos. So we have these three uh, aspects of the divine. There are three in one actually. The transcendent, the universal or the cosmic and the individual. So transcendental will come later on in the next book. The silent soul of all the world was there. A being lived, a presence and a power. A single person who was himself and all and cherished nature's sweet and dangerous throbs, transfigured into beats, divine and pure. So this is the cosmic being or the universal being or the cosmic divine if you want to put it that way. And somehow this passage and a few lines that follow reminds me, uh, it's, it's my way of, normally I don't like to compare the traditional literature and Shurbindo's uh, writings. But it reminds me of those who are familiar with the Gita of the Adi Bhuta, Adi Yagna and Adhyatma. Adhi Dev doesn't exactly figure here, but other three levels, um, other three aspects do come here. Now, now this one, Adi Yagna, where all nature is offering everything to the cosmic divine. And that's the vision in the Gita where he's swallowing all things. And then he's releasing all things. Now, if you really look at it like this, nature is offering every event, everything as a sacrifice. And what is the divine doing? He is purifying it, returning back. So people may think it is philosophy, but I find it an extremely practical experience which happens to every one of us. It's just that we are not conscious of it. Let's take for example pain. You know, we experience pain, let's say during adolescence people go through heartbreaks or certain losses, failures, etc. Now this is 17, 18, when they are 35, 40, maybe much earlier, they laugh over it. What happened? What changed the whole thing? It was a very painful experience at that moment. And there is something within us which changed it into a different equivalent. It's like the currency changed. <laughs> it was painful. 
And it's not that we tried anything. Nobody tries any processes. Oh, I want to change this pain into, but it changes actually into equivalent of delight. If you really look back, and you look back at all the follies and stupidities of life. Somebody very, on one of my birthdays, <laughs> our Chaman Laji very nicely mm. came and said, so how old are you? I said, I have just touched 50, many years back. He said, oh, uh, <laughs> I may not recapture the exact phrase, but it was something like this effect. Oh, uh, old enough not to do stupidities, young enough. <laughs> to commit, you know, for the mm. wisdom. So it was like that. Like, you know, you are in that phase where all the stupidities, that seeming stupidities, have changed into the tinsel of wisdom. There is a time when, you know, it changes. So we have here nature offering everything. And what does it do? The cosmic being, it cherished nature's sweet and dangerous throbs, transfigured into beats divine and pure. So that is at once the Adhyatma, a single person who was himself and all and the Adhyagna who transmutes everything and returns it back. But the next line reminds me yes. of mother. Yes, of course. It's it in is that mother. love. It is. One who could love without return for love. Only at this plane, the world mother, she, she comes at the end of this candle. Mm -hmm. She only can love without return for love. So people, when they talk about unconditional love, true love, you know, love without expectation, in some way or the other, they are trying to ignorantly and vaguely seek for the Divine Mother. They don't know this. <coughs> they are wanting to find it in a human being. But obviously, it's, it's possible in a human being, only somebody who is identified completely with the Divine Mother. That is why it is said that next to the love of God is the love that the master can give you, not even a mother and father's love. Because a master is identified with that universal. So he loves unconditionally. Look at Mother and Shirobindo, how they loved he, and continue to love. One who could love without return for love and so many stories of mother, which at several times, you know, we have recounted. Meeting and turning to the best, the worst. It healed the bitter cruelties of earth, transforming all experience to delight. This is what we were yes. talking about. Yeah. And people went and gave them all their pain, bitterness, suffering. Sometimes a word, sometimes just a smile, sometimes a look, a glance. Sometimes just being in that atmosphere and everything was changed. So this is because that's what the cosmic being does. But it takes time. Here when he is present as a representative, so it changes everything. And that's exactly what we see in the Gita. You know, it starts with a gori war. But its end is very strange. The Gita, I'm not talking of the Mahabharata. But Gita in the Mahabharata, when the <coughs> end of the great scripture comes, it starts with the vision of a battlefield where heroes are going to die very sad, uh, you know, moment for everyone and Arjuna is rightly disturbed. How does it end? It ends with Sanjay's uh, saying that, well, you know, two things that I am reminded of which are filling me with great harsh joy. What is it? One is the vision of the Lord on the battlefield of the Kurukshetra. <laughs> Second is this samvad that I have heard. I have been a private of this dialogue. It is filling me with, me with great delight. And if you really look at it now, down the ages, Mahabharata is gone, the pain is gone, the sorrow is gone, the loss is gone, Yudhishthira's suffering which continued for years after the war, all that is gone. But what has remained is the Gita, which continues to give delight. So this is how the... So in there you see actually the cosmic uh, uh, person, being, who you know, changes everything. So, and Mother used to say also on, on this, uh, she would say, write to me, even three times a yes, day. Yes, absolutely. Sri Aurobindo would say, write to Mother. Tell me everything. And now, then Mother said, do it at the Samadhi. Yes, we have that book, Benedictions of the Grace. Yes. And she says that you, you go to the Samadhi and tell him just as you tell me. Exactly. And then she says something very interesting. He says, earlier, uh, 
people thought that Shurabindo is taking time and you know he is replying um, after some delay those he says laughs and says it's not true actually the moment people wrote a letter they got the response that's how it was yes, yes, yes. with Shurabindo so people thought it was like that she said it's not true so they thought he is not accessible but he was as accessible but now it is even more so you just go at the samadhi and just tell him and he hears and he listens and he responds. Yes. So what a response, you know, I remember you know, Gyan Ben, Santosh Ben's sister. So she was uh, having blood cancer and I used to go there and she would confide many things. Uh, very beautiful lady. And uh, one day a group had come and they wanted to ask her that, you know, you have been here for so many years, you came as a young girl. So tell us about sadhana. Everybody wants to know about sadhana. <laughs> so people have all kinds of ideas about sadhana. She said something very beautiful. I was very touched, you know. She said, I'll tell in Hindi, then I'll translate it. Because that original I still remember. Ham to bas itna jante hain ki hamari jo kuch samasyaayin, hamari jo kuch avasthaayin, sab leke ham samadhi par ja kar maa ko keh dete hain. और बदले में वो हमको फिर से शांति और आनंद से भर देती हैं। We go to the samadhi and all our problems, difficulties, our inner difficulties, outer difficulties, inner challenges, obstacles, everything we go and just offer at the samadhi, say it to her at the samadhi, and she returns joy and peace, and we go back as if a whole burden has been taken. So beautiful. This is sadhana. No, sadhana is not sitting in a stiff corner and trying to do this and that, you know. Somebody, as I was telling, asked me recently how to have cosmic consciousness. You don't they know how to have cosmic consciousness. There are technical methods. But love the mother and you will enter into it. Because you will by identification enter into it. Sri Arbindo speaks of Tapasya. Yeah. He says, yeah. it's a difficult way, yeah. it can be done, but the easiest way is to mother. Yes. So, we see that. And quite naturally, when there is the mother, there is also the child intervening in the sorrowful paths of birth. It rocked the cradle of the cosmic child. Now you see, you, you have the description of the psychic uh, being who is facing this life on earth with all the problems and who has entered into the cosmic cradle, if you like. Mm. <laughs> so he's there. And what does he do? and stilled all weeping with its hand of joy. This is exactly the experience I was reminding, reminded of, that you go and offer to the Lord. As simple as that. The sign that one has progressed far on the path is that one begins to feel more and more as a child of the Divine Mother. Everything else fuses into that. Kapali Shastri, we had done all kinds of sadhana. Tantra sadhana, mantra sadhana, Vedanta yoga and all these things. Somebody asked him, you did all these things? Kundalini Yoga. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, they asked Kapali Shastri when he was on the bed that what did you gain by all this? So he said, what? They brought me to the feet of the Divine Mother. So if one can live in that state, one has reached that state, then that is what one discovered that it was the Divine who was the Sadhak. And we just thought that I am doing Sadhana. It led things evil towards their secret good. Now look at it. That's the cosmic truth. And whatever is evil holds within itself a secret good. Including the goriest of gori war of Mahabharata. I remember one story about a girl who, who was chased by ghosts. And she said, only when I come to Pondicherry, then these ghosts stop chasing me. I said, they are very nice ghosts. They are chasing you all the way to Pondicherry. <laughs> what a blessing. <laughs> Things he will toward their secret good. After all, what is it? What, what are the adverse forces hmm. doing? People keep saying, Mother says people think they are hounded by adverse forces. But what are they doing? They are actually instruments of sincerity. If you look inside, they are showing us that we are all, we have not been sincere. So they help us in that way. So... It led things evil towards their secret good. It turned ragged falsehood into happy truth. Its power was to reveal divinity. 
That's why mother says to everybody, my child, and those who grow in likeness with her, that's the sadharma mukti, they, in everybody, see the divine possibility. She says, my child, if one moment the divine were to feel the way human beings experience with all their ideas of justice, the whole world will collapse. So she says, I always look upward towards truth, towards beauty, towards divinity and you also must look like that. She says, tells the disciple, I don't see defects of human beings and they are, everybody has defects. And one of the signs of growing into her likeness is this, that one begins to see that, that in everyone, defects are like the bark of a tree. I had a nice uh, WhatsApp exchange today. Someone telling me that, you know, are you sure you see these uh, things inside me? I said, yes. So, but my outer nature is, so it came, that outer nature is like the bark of a tree. It doesn't tell you anything about the tree. On the contrary, it many times conceals the fragrance of the tree. It doesn't tell you about the nature of the tree, the seed, the sap, the, the fruits and the flowers that are going to come up. It just creates an appearances. So that way, that's what is about outer nature. But concealed within, there is a truth and that it liberates. So its power was to reveal divinity. Infinite, infinite, coeval with the mind of God. It bore within itself a seed, a flame, a seed from which the eternal is newborn, a flame that cancels death in mortal things. Now you see, it is a very interesting word, coeval with the mind of God. Mm. So if you really look at mind of God, the divine mind, Actually, it would be the super mind. It, as if it, it's one with that. Shubindu could have just said that it is infinite. It is the mind of God. But he uses the word coeval. See, the cosmic spirit is, if you look at it hierarchically. Now, super mind is the transcendent realm. So, it is just one with it. Just at that junction. Which is what will come in the next canto. So, it's coeval with the mind of God. And what it is doing is, it bears within itself, bore within itself a seed, a flame. Both ways we can look at the soul. A seed from which the eternal is newborn. In each one of us, the eternal is newborn. There is something new which manifests through each individual psychic seed. At every moment. At every moment. That's why there is creation. Otherwise, it's only as a possibility. And in each one in a unique way. That's why no two paths are alike. No two journeys are alike. In a certain sense, each individual journey is the journey of the eternal in that person. We think it's my journey and me. me. As long as we are me and my, it's a problem. The moment me and my changes into ma, then it's okay. <laughs> so, a seed from which the eternal is newborn, a flame that cancels death in mortal things. All grew to all, kindred and self and near. The intimacy of God was everywhere. No veil was felt, no brute barrier inert. Distance could not divide, time could not change. This is true love. If you really want to love people truly, we must be awakened in this psychic being. That's why even to solve the problems of everyday life, people think yoga is, you know, something which some people do. It has nothing to do with life. In fact, it is very intimately connected with life. If you want really, let's say, a simple thing like joy of relationship, beauty and harmony in relationship, true love in relationship, you cannot do it without realizing the psychic being. And when you realize, you realize that in the other person also it is there. So the barriers of mind and life, the brute, inert, all this is gone. You feel a soul intimacy with people, which is very different and changes the whole vision and perspective. Then it's not like if you are far from mind, you are like, you know, uh, forgotten. Because distance could not divide. Time could not change like the love of Radha and Krishna and Rama and Sita. A fire of passion burned in spirit depths. A constant touch of sweetness linked all hearts. There it is. There it is. So you know you feel that love, universal love within for everyone. It's not just for 
one or two or this. They will be psychic, special psychic bonds. But they will also be in the background, a vast universal love and sweetness. Won't life become better and beautiful, much better than all these political and uh, socio-religious methods that we try? This way of yoga is to make life sweet and beautiful. The throb of one adoration's single bliss in a wrapped ether of undying love. So to love the mother is eventually to end up loving all creation because she is here in creation. She loves everyone. How can we love her and not love her creation? An inner happiness abode in all a sense of universal harmonies. So if you want happiness, psychic is the seat of happiness. It's the seat of sweetness. It's the seat of love. It is the eater of the honey, as the Kathopanishad says. A measureless, secure eternity of truth and beauty and good and joy made one. This is the Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Shubindo adds to it Ananda. <laughs> because where the three come together, there is Ananda. See how Shubindo always complete something which is even missing in these scriptures and we don't take note of it. We speak about Satyam, Sivam, Sundaram. Of course, Sundaram has Ananda and love in it. But Shubindo extends it, making it even more yeah. with the emphasis that it is Anandam. It is Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram and it is Anandam. Of truth and beauty and good and joy made one. Here was the welling core of finite life. A formless spirit became the soul of form. So this is where is the knot from which the finite worlds of mind and life and body and the soul centering into space and time starts. Beyond it is the formless infinite. So that's the all there was soul or made of sheer soul stuff. So what is the nature of the substance of soul? Soul is not just a nebulous entity. It has a form. And it, if it is a form, it has a substance. So what is the soul substance? A sky of soul covered a deep soul ground. So if you enter into this plane, all around is that substance which is felt. All here was known by a spiritual sense. Thought was not there, but a knowledge near and one. Seized on all things by a moved identity. So when Sri writes in one of the letters, the soul knows the Divine Mother. No amount of proofs for or against can change its position. It knows the Divine by a sense of soul intimacy. How do you know that she is the Divine Mother? Because... It's the soul has been touched, it woke up and when it beheld a face, it knew that this is she of whom the world has heard. <laughs> this is the soul knowledge. It has, there is no mind or thought or analysis or any amount of, you know, uh, jargon of the mind. A sympathy of self with other selves. This is the source of true sympathy that we feel sometimes in intense moments we feel this soul sympathy which spontaneously springs from the depths the touch of consciousness on consciousness and beings look on being with inmost gaze and heart laid bare to heart without walls of speech what a marvelous line speech was meant to be a bridge between two human beings. What it has become? A wall to create confusion. The moment people speak and if they speak a little long, <laughs> they will surely misunderstand each other. <laughs> How often, you know, we have this expression between people, oh, oh you are catching on to my words, I didn't mean that. And both are saying I didn't mean that. <laughs> so what did you mean? Uh, if you have the soul experience, you will smile. You know, <laughs> behind all this, there is love. 
you know like that story yeah. of guta who threw the roses at mother oh, yeah. and said you don't love me or i don't love you or something like that and mother sends a letter through vasudha ben tell her she does not know how much love she has in her heart for me mother could see it she could not so this is the soul knowledge and when we live in that how beautiful life will become this is just a little touch of how beautiful life can become yes if we live by that no walls of speech you don't have to speak you know sometimes intuitively we catch that truth the true friendship where two people can sit in silence how they can sit in silence only when they are in that soul state in the last years mother said words are inadequate yes she had such difficulty explaining what was happening in the body yes with our poverty of words and understanding yes so this is the soul experience of life and the unanimity of seeing minds in myriad forms luminous with the one god seeing minds not thought mind it is able to see the truth behind and arrives at a unanimity uh, in self realization when shubindu describes this in book 1 canto 4 the secret knowledge mm. he uses an exp- ex- expression a vast unanimity ended lives debate a vast unanimity where does it come from it comes from the soul depths yes life was not there but an impassioned force what is life is probably this is what the sankhya uh, spoke of as mahas the the first principle which emerges out of nature undifferentiated nature becomes the cosmic takes a cosmic force and it is a force tremendous force that's what life is there impassioned impassioned force finer than fineness deeper than the deeps felt as a subtle and spiritual power a quivering out from soul to answering soul it is also powerful it's not just sweet soul power is tremendous look at prahlad what did he fight the great demon king hiranyakashipu with his own father pure by his soul power he did nothing all that he kept saying is all is the divine all is the divine all is the divine he tried so many times to kill him he couldn't eventually in the process he got destroyed this is the soul power soul power in fact it can be very devastating shubindu speaks of that in yes is on the gita when vishwamitra attacked vasist with his army so what did vasist say he did nothing he just sat quietly looked within his so in fact he just said if you want to take kam then you take and the moment he came near the soul power that was released was devastating an entire army got destroyed so vishwamitra asked what is this power that you have i don't have with all my army and all this what is this power then was he of course uh, smiles and he discovers it's the soul power and he goes in search of it because you know all the armies can it is in that state mother says the arm of an assassin will drop if you are in that state in savitri seeks for her answering soul yes so it is that state of power in which a quivering out from soul to answering soul a mystic movement a close influence a free and happy and intense approach of being to being with no screen or check look at the word intense people have this idea about spirituality and soul and all oh it's a very you know inert kind of some state very intense state shubham the describes that to in dilip kumar roy in a letter that you think that only the vital can love intensely there is an intensity in the psychic love but it is not the red heat of the vital it is the white pure and white flame yes which loves with intensity burns look at you know in ancient scriptures how people have loved not just between human beings sometimes their motherland the divine with what intensity of seeking and love look at mira everything she loses and yet you know she goes about and never for a moment there is a word of complaint 
why did you do this to me why did you make me you know an outcast in my own kingdom why did you give me such a husband who is a doesn't understand me nothing everything in her life is turned towards a sweet alchemy of divine love into ananda and so much so that at the end she says i am filled with your color mai saavre ke rang rachi what i want to be is your slave this is very powerful intensity and before this intensity the emperors come and they bow at the feet somebody had actually they asked you know his contemporary of akbar wanted her to come and sing in the court she says no way <laughs> i only sing for my kana wherever he takes me who can say this with such a simplicity after all if a emperor is saying you will say what's wrong let me go i have been banished from my kingdom maybe he'll give me a nice place nothing and kapali shastri saw mother as a flame, yes, of, flame white of white light, light. Mm. that intensity which you discover inside the psychic intensity it can actually if it takes to itself has the power to demolish a whole world but it's quiet it is turned toward the divine and therefore the divine protects so this is the true intense bhakti not the intense bhakti of the vital kind where people sing and jump and dance and all those bhajans which are full of all those vital entities <laughs> yeah that's true all those dances they are more like party going on without <laughs> of being to being with no screen or check without which life and love could never have been the basis of love is soul intimacy yes. mother had actually walked away when there was one of those songs with dilip kumar roy was singing and indra devi was dancing she suddenly got up and went away he felt very hurt he was very extremely sensitive she wrote to shirbindo <laughs> she with the reply no no nothing much she just saw when she was dancing lot of lower vital entities come near <laughs> so we have one way of looking at life and the divine has a direct vision <laughs> that it was not dance for the divine it was dance where there was lot of personal uh, attachments and appreciation sought after that's why you see this is the origin of radha's prayer i think many of us perhaps may be knowing it sahana di was trying to do the radha dance but she just couldn't do she became very sensitive she be, she just you know fumbled so she asked mother what should i do she said first of all you should not be self conscious then you must know the state in which radha is you have to reproduce that state dance will flow it's not a technique then she describes what is the state of radha when she stands before the lord she says everything is yours let me be what you would want me to be and i'll be happy it's a very tremendous intensity of self giving and then next day she gave her radha's prayer first she gave her the state and then the radha's prayer that is the basis of love self giving body was not there for bodies were needed not no veil was needed the soul itself was its own deathless form and met at once the touch of other souls close blissful concrete wonderfully true so it's possible that two people may fight here hammer and tongs when they go there as jeevatma they may say you know what <laughs> you are so stupid yeah but we enjoyed it because there it is no more seen you can't experience hatred there you can't experience jealousy there it's not possible because it's made of soul stuff <laughs> it's impossible nothing of that kind will come no hostile force can enter into the psychic world it's just impossible as when one walks in sleep through luminous dreams and conscious knows the truth their figures mean here where reality was its own dream he knew things by their soul and not their shape so one is that we in dreams we are moving around and we don't know so next day we asked a dream interpreter but when you experience a dream world aware inside you know what it means it's all symbolic but you know what it means simultaneously it says like that their people knew they were it it's like a dream world but nevertheless everyone knew 
what each one and each thing represents. He knew things by their soul and not their shape. Otherwise, in the vital world, something which looks huge may be frightening. But actually it may be nothing, just a little worm. And we have stories like that in the Bhagavad, where a huge or the Purana serpent becomes just a worm. It is so true. Here we are appalled. Oh my God, such a powerful person, he can do this or do that. But if you see from the soul point of view, it may be nothing. So His next few lines are so beautiful. Yes. Ah, very beautiful and ah. look how he knows. Of course he knows, but knows even our ignorant lives. As those who have lived long, made one in love, need word nor sign for heart's reply to heart. He met and communed without bar of speech, with beings unveiled by a material frame. Again, wall of speech, bar of speech. And those who have lived long years together, they understand each other. You don't need to, you know, tell them this or that, this required, oh, he did this or she did that. They know, they understand each other perfectly well. It's a total harmony. But it can come without living long enough if we live in the soul state. Then time and space don't matter. I remember once this urge came into me discussing. I said, why can't we see the whole world? I just turned to yoga and just come here first time. And I said, uh, I remember that we were, I was having a discussion with Dr. Maheshwari and he is was speaking about human relationship. I said, but why can't people love each other in a psychic state? It must be possible to love people in a psychic way. And before he could reply, I saw Champaklalji coming. And then Champaklalji, Champaklalji, and I rushed to touch his feet. He said, no, nobody touches his feet. Mm -hmm. People stopped me. He stood. He didn't say anything. He kept looking at me. Then I came. Then the question was gone. But I remember that moment est in my memory. It was in the sports ground. That, you know, it came into me that there must be a way to love truly and beautifully from the psychic state. Why do we need to discard life and discard everything as if it is meaningless? So, this is what is the psychic love. Normally it comes when people have lived, walked long. There was a strange spiritual scenery a loveliness of lakes and streams and hills, a flow, a fixity in a soul space, and plains and valleys, stretches of soul joy, and gardens that were flower tracts of the spirit, its meditations of tinged reverie. That is why I feel this is the Adibhuta in the true sense, not the way it is described in the literal explanation in the scriptures. So he is the Lord of all that is perishable and made of the elements. But he reveals there in him, it is in its true form, true sense. Here it expresses itself in a limited way and a limited sense. That, that's uh, my you know, understanding. Air was the breath of a pure infinite. A fragrance wandered in a colored haze. As if the scent and dew of all sweet flowers had mingled to copy heaven's atmosphere. Mother describes this experience in the agenda. All these scents have come together and become a single you. In the Gita we have this experience in the Vishwarup Darshan. Um, I don't remember exactly the Sanskrit. Anek, Gandha, you know that it comes. Many views, many scents. Ah, yes. So if, now what is that? All the he's all these smells and scents he's absorbing and they are transmuting into a divine celestial smell. It is not the of that which is beyond. Here all these smells are taken into itself and it becomes divya, divine by its touch. Appealing to the soul and not the eye. Beauty lived there at home, in her own house. There all was beautiful by its own right. 
and needed not the splendor of a robe. So it didn't matter. So people who live in the soul state are freed spontaneously from all this. Oh, I am beautiful. I am not uh, or good looking, which uh, unfortunately equated with beauty and all that. It drops off because you spontaneously begin to experience it inside. Everyone is beautiful. <laughs> so all objects were like bodies of the gods. A spirit symbol environing a soul for world and self were one reality. That is the cosmic spirit. Whole world is its extension. So this, um, as I said, to me this, when I had read this chapter in the Gita, when Arjuna asked this question, tell me what is Adhyatma, Adi Bhuta, Adi Deva, Adi Yagna, Sri Krishna explains, but it's not fully clear, at least to me it was like the meanings are clear. But it's like something you feel is missing. You, you want to know something still. And when I had read this, I felt here is the complete answer. Mm. You can see all, all those respects. Yes. And very beautifully, in a very practical way, this is Savitri. More practical than anything else. See, actually is relating, you know, explaining to us in experientially what it is to live in the soul and of course he's describing the world soul but that is the soul's experience because it it's there it that's its home and that is where we go after death so there's after the break starts a new passage we can read a few lines now the beauty of this passage often people ask you know when people pass away what should we read so everybody wants some ritual, no? <laughs> Garur Puran is very... I, I don't recommend. It's very gory. <laughs> I don't know about the departed one, but those on earth will show. <laughs> All heaven and hell. Gita is very nice, but... Okay, but we want to read something which is simpler, shorter. So I recommend this whole canto, The World Soul, or the passage which starts from here, because it reveals... What happens after death? You yes. want to read something which is relevant. What happens after death? So it starts from here. Immersed in voiceless internatal trance. So internatal is between two births. The beings that once wore forms on earth sat there. In shining chambers of spiritual sleep. So we go into her womb. Where there are all little chambers. You go there. Now, you know, voiceless. You don't need to, you know, because mother is there. She has put us in that state. One uh, Urdu mystic um, has described it, Sufi mystic, has described this state when you, you know, this voiceless state when you are totally oblivious of everything except that delight. He says, Mujhe be khudi ki tune bhali chasni chatai. Chasni is, you know, a sweet um, preparation. Not sweet, but the essence, like when you boil sugar, uh, sugar syrup. So he says, what have you given me, this sugar syrup, that I have lost all awareness, Bekhudi, I have become oblivious of everything else. Except that delight. So this is the state in which soul goes. Every night we travel there, touch it and come back. So why do people feel, you know, scared of death or are, you know, oh, death? It's nice going to the heart of Divine Mother, to her bosom, from her office and workplace. You are going to her garden and her heart. What is there to feel sorry? She will take us in her lap, put her, put each one of us, there is a shining chamber of spiritual sleep. Okay, my child sleep there. You have, you know, had your quota <laughs> of human interaction. <laughs> Come. Past were the pillar posts of birth and death. Past was the little scene of symbol deeds. So scene of symbol deeds are the vital mental worlds and where you experience the so-called hell and heaven, states of consciousness, all that is past. Past where the heavens and hells of their long road, they had returned into the world's deep soul. This is what happens after death. Five, six lines in a nutshell. But the whole passage is about that. Few more lines, then we'll stop. All now was gathered into pregnant rest. So all the experiences of one life are gathered, their essence, not the 
details. So this idea that when you come back, who were you and you remember in great detail, I was emperor so and so and I did this. No, it cannot be. So all those people who describe in great detail, mother says it's all humbug. What you remember is the soul memory. Like I said, this memory is sized in my consciousness. The whole scene, Champak Lalji is there and he is walking. The whole scene is alive. And I am just having this feeling that why can't there be psychic love? Now this is a soul memory. Then standing before mother and getting that command, quit smoking. Now like that all of us have many soul memories which we will gather. And at the end of life these soul memories flash past. And within 10 minutes they can complete the whole picture. If we had many soul memories, maybe a little more. That's why it's good to allow some time. And then we gather their essence, all the rest is left here. It doesn't matter. This is like the bark of a tree. There are many people who teach these regression oh. things. And uh, I can see where you stand. <laughs> I tell you, this regression therapy, the only good it has done is made people in the Western world believe there is rebirth. <laughs> So there is, you know, a, a good out of every evil. <laughs> so at least people are believing there is rebirth. All the rest is. <laughs> uh, so you, this is beautiful. I think we'll stop here because okay. it's a very beautiful and important yes, passage. Yes. We should read it at one go, not in bits and parts.